want to open the phones up at the bottom of the hour with your specific economic or geopolitical questions for Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, American economist, former editor, the editor of the Wall Street Journal, writes for Creator Syndicate today, a multi-time New York Times bestseller, uh, head of policy number two at the Treasury under Reagan, the father of Reaganomics. I'm not going to get into all the big think tanks he's been part of. Uh, he's well known to this audience. PaulCraigRoberts.org is his excellent website. We carry his articles at Infowars.com. But I wanted to get him on just to, about the waterfront, the insane escalation of moving heavy weapons into Ukraine and Lithuania. The bizarre Samantha Power speech two weeks ago, openly threatening Russia. I was just rereading last night about Napoleon's invasion of Russia. He was undefeated. And how the Russians burned Moscow rather than let him have it. And he was gravely mistaken and he lost. Only a few thousand of his men came back. There's a famous historical, I think it's a West Point graph, where they showed the trajectory of Napoleon's troops. You can look at it online, just type a graph of Napoleon's troops going into Russia and coming out. And then, of course, Hitler with Operation Barbarossa. Just in, just in Russia, they lost 8 million troops. And then they lost millions more when the Russians came in. A total of 21 million Germans died, or about a third of their population. That was a good idea, right, attacking Russia? And they say empires don't just go to Afghanistan to die, they go to Russia to die. And, and again, no one's lionizing Vladimir Putin or any of these people, but we're on their doorstep, we're attacking them, we're hiring radical Muslims to blow stuff up all over their caucus region. The older Zarnev brother was on a State Department visa over there in a CIA program. Look how that worked out for him. The Russians blew his cover two years before the false flag in Boston. And now Pelosi is set to vote for the TAA, fast-tracking, paving a way for Obama trade agenda. And the Washington Post says Obama poised for major trade win, burnishing his foreign policy legacy. Like it's about his legacy that the Republican leadership has joined with him, the horrible neocons and rhinos, to make the president basically a dictator with these foreign banks to do whatever they want, restrict. Ted Cruz has finally read some of the bill. Now he says he's against it because it opens the borders and everything else. This is crazy. And the Atlantic is out today. I'm just setting the table here for Roberts to comment on what he wants to get into first. The Atlantic has a big article. It's like 25 pages long. A world without work. And they ask, will it be a good thing that they're setting the economy up to offshore the jobs and the jobs we do have will be done by robots? So do we even need people anymore? This is like kind of a replay of does the future need us or why the future doesn't need us from Wired Magazine 15 years ago with Bill Joy going to the conference with 200 computer company owners, billionaires. And the decision was made at the conference that no, we don't need a general population anymore. <laughs> And you can argue we don't need a decadent slob population like Wally laying around, but this isn't even really being discussed until now. So we're going over the edge into this global depression. They've turned radical Islamists loose all over the Middle East, truly from a historical basis. And I'm a novice historian. I, I love reading history books from every angle. It's better than fiction. It's page turner. We are a tyranny now. We are a very oppressive, evil empire that is acting insane and needs to be stopped. Okay, that's my rant introducing Dr. Roberts. We'll get into the economy, the bond bubble that Ron Paul thinks is about to go under. Uh, could this be the moment this, this winter, early next year? No one knows. Uh, but my God, it's, it's just crazy to see how the megalomania has escalated and... No one stopped Hitler yet. Uh, is Hitler about to turn into Russia? I mean, I'm not trying to go there with that allegory, but it does fit. Uh, the, uh, Dr. Roberts, I mean, are we not at a breathless moment, what we're witnessing? <laughs> Certainly are. You, you put a good summation on it, Alex. Um, you know, the thing about uh, all these threats to Russia, um, 
I wonder sometimes if they're real, because I know the neocons are crazy and that Obama's government is totally incompetent and unrealistic. But I would think even crazy people well, would not actually want to go start a war with Russia. <laughs> and so I sometimes wonder if all of this isn't just trying to intimidate Russia or make them accept the sum of American hegemony. Uh, it, it could just be a strategy. But, but of course, the trouble with a strategy like that, if indeed that's what it is, is it can very quickly uh, take off on its own and get away from you and lead to war. So I do agree with you that um, this administration is recklessly dangerous. They, have, they are endangering all life on Earth. <clears throat> and I blame also the European countries because they enable this. You know, if they were simply to say, look, uh, we're not any longer going along with this. Um, we've figured out that NATO is the mechanism you use <clears throat> uh, to uh, generate conflict with Russia, and we're out of NATO. You're on your own. <laughs> that would put a stop to it. I have even have some hopes that if the Greek government were simply to default, leave the EU, leave NATO, turn to the east, that it would begin the unraveling of NATO, because Spain and Italy are also uh, subject to the looting that Greece is. Sure, you said that here a year ago. That was the Financial Times of London headline uh, on Monday was, uh, quote, U.S. fears Greece going to Russia. Look at Egypt, our ally, has been forced into Russia's arms uh, yeah. just out of necessity. Well, these things could redeem the situation. I don't know that they will. <laughs> but uh, it, it's dangerous if something doesn't happen to redeem it. Uh, the propaganda anti-Russian propaganda, the anti-Putin propaganda, it, this is extreme. We've never really seen this before. This is the highest level of hate. You know, the other day, uh, Robert Perry reminded us of George Orwell's 1984, when uh, there's, there's two minutes of hate. You flash the uh, image of the enemy on the screen, and, and the population goes into two minutes of hate. Well, that's what the New York Times does with Putin. <laughs> it performs the same role of Big Brother in, in, in Orwell's book. So it's a, da a dangerous situation. Um, I, I have no idea what, uh, what is going to happen. It looks, though, that the Russians are taking it very quietly in stride. They're not um, <clears throat> getting their back up. They're not responding in provocative ways. Uh, so that's good, because uh, it takes two people, unless uh, the idiot uh, Obama regime decides to have a preemptive nuclear attack. <laughs> and you do know that uh, neoconservatives in this praised government of ours uh, favor that. Or some of them do. And you were in the highest levels of government and been in some of the biggest think tanks. You were the editor of the Wall Street Journal when it had the top respect, not so much now with Murdoch. Uh, I mean, you were there, you, were, you knew Ronald Reagan well, he brought you in. Uh, Ronald Reagan helped break the Soviet Union's back, which was a corrupt empire. You helped negotiate a lot of that. I know you don't like to brag, uh, but you got awards from France and stuff for doing it. Versus the government you knew then, which certainly wasn't perfect, versus this one, just the way they act on the surface seems reckless. And, 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 and the recklessness of Wall Street, all of it, really is the type of stuff historically that does lead to war, as many historians have said, but but now we've got nuclear weapons. I mean, we just can't do this. Yes, well, you're right. And the government is so different from anything that I experienced or would have ever expected. You know, you how, how do you work things out with a country that you are demonizing, uh, whose leader is demonized? You know, it's not like that Putin is unpopular. He's got 86 percent of the Russian people behind him. This is unheard of in the West. Uh, but when you, uh, when the United States uh, says, "Okay, we're all-out 
propaganda, all-out demonization, then there's no basis for diplomacy. And so it does look like the Obama regime is driving to war. That's exactly what it looks like. Why do they hate Putin so much? I mean, did it start with him arresting the oligarchs that turned out to be Western no, front men? No. Uh, they hate him because, you know, the neoconservative doctrine, the Wolfowitz doctrine, says that the first objective of American foreign policy is to prevent the rise of any other country that could serve as a constraint on Washington's power. That's right. So anybody doing okay is a threat and has to be destabilized, hence the that's destabilization right. moves everywhere. That's right. And so when, you see, uh, Washington was used to Yeltsin just letting them do whatever they wanted. And then Washington got involved heavily in the Middle East in the wars. You remember the, the cakewalk war that's still going on? <laughs> yes. Uh, the surge in Afghanistan. I mean, we've been totally defeated. And the neocons got all involved in that. And Putin came along and restored Russian sovereignty. And they noticed it. Uh, that is, the neocons noticed it when Putin blocked Obama's invasion of Syria. Stay there, sir. So this is an attack on sovereignty is what you're saying. More than it's anything. They rush for being a sovereign state. It's global government. Doesn't, doesn't want them to have a sovereign state. That's exactly it. And we got the Pope promoting global government for carbon taxes. I mean, it's, it, it comes down to that. Russia stands in the way of the world government, New World Order. And that's why it has to fall. We'll be back. Paul Craig Roberts is our guest till 50 after. We will take some calls coming up in the next segment. Your specific geopolitical questions, military questions, just quick questions when we get to the next person. First time callers, the toll free number is 800. 259 800-259-9231. If you look at PNAC that Dr. Roberts was just getting into uh, with the neocons, who themselves were founded by Trotskyites, just it's bizarre, and already have a hatred of Russia kind of embedded, it's about absolute power and Pax Americana, but, but not even helping America. They use American muscle to build this corporate world government that's exempt from taxes, and to do that, they've got to get rid of rogue nations. Well, they see China as rogue. They see Russia as rogue. They see uh, Iran as rogue. They see Syria as rogue. Does that mean some of these countries don't have problems and aren't totalitarian? Absolutely. But you just, if they can't beat the Iraqis and they can't beat the Afghans, no one wins in a war with Russia. I know that's not rocket science, but... How do we get that message across to the elite, and uh, Dr. Roberts, and some people, you kind of alluded to this, they actually think maybe Putin's in a backroom deal with Obama, and this is all to make him popular at home, and to have weapon sales over here, and that this is all paper tigers. But I've studied history, and I'm looking at this. This doesn't look fake to me, Dr. Roberts. Oh, of course it's not fake, no. Uh, I think you summed it up well when, when you said that the, the neocons... Uh, see themselves as the new world order. It's not something that's being imposed from the outside on the United States. It's something the neocons are imposing on the world. It's an ideology, and people who are in the grips of ideology, they don't hear facts. They don't hear criticisms. And so I don't think there's any chance of the neoconservatives realizing that no one wins in a war with Russia, particularly since Russia and China are now allies. A war with Russia means also a war with China. And the United States military is simply not capable of fighting Russia and China simultaneously, even in a nuclear context. So it is dangerous. We agree on that. And we'll just have to see what happens. You know, I said there are some hopes. There are some hopes that the Europeans will finally realize that they are pawns in this game, they have nothing to gain from it, and that they will break off from it. And if, if they do, then Washington loses the NATO mechanism that it needs in order to generate conflict with Russia. So we'll just have to wait and, and, and see. Um, if you want to turn to the bonds, I said bond market has been a bubble now for how long? Six or seven years? <laughs> 
Yes, we've got a long segment coming up, but we can start here. This is a short segment. Uh, we're hearing a lot of uh, increasing signs from mainline economists that the bond bubble's in trouble. What's your view on that, sir? Well, my view is the Federal Reserve can keep the interest rates low because they can print all the money they want to buy up all the bonds. <laughs> and so to have the bond bubble go, if the Fed is opposed to its going, would require trouble with the dollar. The dollar will have to go because the Fed can't print foreign currencies with which to buy dollars. So I've always felt that the Fed could keep the bond bubble going until the dollar itself got into trouble. Because if the dollar itself gets into trouble and starts losing exchange value, uh, and the Fed keeps printing more dollars to buy the bonds to keep that bubble alive, that would add to the pressure on the dollar. And since the basis for American power is the dollar as world reserve currency, the Fed would have to let the bond market go in order to save the dollar. That's always been my view on it. Now, I may be wrong. Who knows? So are we approaching a, a crisis at that point? Uh, or could this Ponzi scheme go on indefinitely? Well, I think the Ponzi scheme can go on as long as the rest of the world is content to hold the dollars. And you see right now, in fact, for some time, um, Washington has had the European Central Bank printing euros and the Japanese Central Bank printing yen. So the other two large currencies are also being printed, just like the dollar. So that prevents pressure from rising on the dollar. And as we've talked on previous uh, shows, the Federal Reserve allows the bullion banks, the big banks in New York, to sell naked shorts uh, on the COMEX to drive down the gold price. So it's so totally rigged. Stay there. Explain that totally to us when we come back. All right. Explain that. Sorry to cut you off at that key point. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, paulcraigroberts.org is the website. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. A lot of news on the site. Again, you're listening to The Alex Jones Show on stations across the country and, of course, at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. During the break, uh, over our Internet audio feeds, we air little vignette daily news updates. And one of those reminded me of a story yesterday where this has gotten so ubiquitous that I didn't even report on it. That Google, indeed, has been caught with their Chrome users, their browser users, with the code activating your microphones and cameras watching and listening to you. They told their shareholders 10 years ago that. We wrote an article about it. And back then, people couldn't believe it. Kind of like when we got the secret documents that the Pentagon's preparing to take out the Tea Party, gun owners, veterans, stuff like that. Now everybody knows that's the case. It's all over the news. I mean, it really is mentally ill level crazy. And there's just this corporate and governmental arrogance now of who would want to have a world where Google drives around with driverless cars with antennas stealing everybody's passcodes. They're worse than the NSA. And Microsoft is horrible. I mean, government's not just our problem. It's we've had it so good so long that there's almost a, 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 a trance state that corporate people are in where they're so insulated by the corrupt courts and the system to commit these crimes. And it is a crime when they do this. It's not a crime because Samsung makes you, when you buy it, sign an agreement. All their new TVs say, we're listening and watching you and giving it to third parties. So if you're dumb enough to take that in your house, they can get away with it. Not with Google, though. It's not in their terms of service yet. They may add it. And I'm not at war with 99% of people at Google. But at the top, they admitted to Wired Magazine a few months ago that they were set up 16 years ago in a government program with NQTEL, CIA, to create an artificially intelligent supercomputer that tracks everybody and taxes everybody. So it's it's just megalomania. And Dr. Roberts, you were getting into the bond market and how long it could go and what could happen. And, I, and I'm just kind of here metaphysically wringing my hands. But what do you make of just the overall bizarre level of flagrant violations of basic common sense human rights, why would the establishment make the decision 
to implement things that are the opposite of a free society. There seems to be a lustful jumping into bed with any and everything bad. Yes, um, no, pub no institution, public or private, uh, in the West it seems to any longer have any integrity. Now, I don't think this was a decision made by the establishment. I think it's a result of a whole bunch of forces and factors. But it's certainly true that integrity is missing. It's, it's missing wherever you look, whether it's the corporations, whether it's public institutions, or whether it's private institutions. Uh, there's just no integrity. And, um, and, and there's no sense of, oh, I have to look myself in the mirror. I've got to do so. I've got to behave appropriately. I can't look myself in the mirror. It's almost the reverse of that. It's if, if I'm not ripping somebody off, I can't look myself in the mirror. If I'm not a crook, if I'm not uh, stealing from somebody, I can't look myself in the mirror. It's just a total change in values. So I, I certainly agree with you. There's no integrity, and we can't rely on it. You can see this every day. Look, um, we, we've had uh, um, one of the chief prosecuting attorneys of the SEC. We've had one of the SEC commissioners herself say that the SEC is failing, it doesn't do its job, it issues waivers to felony actions by the banks. So there's no law enforcement against the privileged. They're, they're like uh, the aristocrats of hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So wherever you look, you see this is, this is the case. Uh, the police, they shoot down people in the streets, including 12-year-old children. And very, very seldom is there any, do they suffer any consequences. So the entire segments in the public sector are just simply becoming immune to law. The executive branch essentially is immune to law. The president says that he can kill people without any evidence or on suspicion alone. Uh, that he can throw people in the jail without uh, bringing a case against him in court and winning. Well, these are horrendous things. Uh, the Western civilization fought for hundreds of years, centuries and centuries, to stop that type of behavior. And now it's all thrown away in the 21st century. You so, wrote yes, a powerful I article a few weeks ago on the um, 800th anniversary of Magna Carta. Maybe you can speak some of that before we go to some of these calls and talk more about the economy or other issues you want to get into. But I think at the end of the day, we've got to look in the mirror uh, collectively, and I think it's our lack of integrity individually. Even if we have integrity, the average person who's decent, we have to go further and say no to the establishment and at least do radio shows and write articles and file lawsuits and run for office, things you've done. And I'm not up on a high horse myself. It's just that people have become spectators, and they just think, hey, we'll let the government run it at some complex thing. We'll let... And then we know that under the rubric of national security, government has become, like you said, the new nobility and the corporations have with diplomatic immunity. And so the classic festering happened. Really bad people got in. They recruited more people. They got away with more and more. And now they're emboldened to try to start war with Russia and all the rest of this craziness. And it it's... It, it, I'm worried about the planet itself. I mean, I, I really think there's a good chance that, I mean, as you've said earlier, the whole planet's in danger uh, because the elite have gone completely insane. Yeah, that's right. I saw something just the other day. Uh, it said that Americans get more upset over somebody flicking them the middle finger or over politically incorrect uh, words than they do over the fact that in the 21st century they destroyed seven countries, millions of people, all based on lies. This doesn't upset them at all. But use a politically incorrect word, word and they just go berserk. So I think that shows a huge failure in the population That's itself. It. We've had our real morals taken. It's okay to kill a million and a half Iraqis. It's okay to put ISIS in charge to kill every Christian and non-radical Muslim. It's okay to wreck all these nations, do all these horrible things. But if you talk bad about 
Caitlyn Jenner or whatever her name is, you're a bad person. Or if you don't embrace it, you're bad. They've now been given faux rights that don't matter to the establishment. It's, it's just sheer madness. I agree. Other areas of the economy, uh, you've talked about the Cook numbers forever, so has John Williams. What about earlier in the year, 0.2 growth? It, doesn't that really mean negative? Ron Paul has said the day of reckoning is coming in the stock market. Uh, you've always said it can take a lot longer than they say for the bubble to pop. You've been saying that for eight, nine years coming on the show. You've really been overall the most accurate in your predictions because uh, you haven't really made a lot. You just talked about the general things. But in your gut, I mean, what do you think is happening? We see all these elites building armored redoubts, going to New Zealand. We see it in the news. Uh, I mean, that to me signifies uh, that they know this house of cards can't go on forever. Well, usually house of cards can't. Uh, that's why they call House of Cards. You know, they don't stand very well. Uh, this one's gone on a long time, uh, in part because of greed. People are content for it to keep going because they can keep making money. <laughs> so um, as for the first quarter growth, yes, I'm sure it's negative. Uh, but you see, as we've talked before, they don't measure inflation correctly. They don't measure unemployment correctly. So if there's no inflation, because they don't measure it, then you can have positive growth, even though it's not really there. <laughs> and you can have a low unemployment rate if you don't measure the unemployed. So since the measures of economic activity themselves have been perverted and no longer have any integrity, they don't really mean anything. <laughs> you can't tell what's going on by looking at their numbers. Uh, you have to realize that these numbers are, are rigged to make it look better than it is. So all of that helps to support a positive psychology. And until the psychology really turns negative on them, they can keep this house of cards going. So That's really, America and the West has become a cult. <laughs> yeah, in a way, yeah. Actually, people live in the matrix. They live in unreality, and they don't see the reality in front of them every day. They live in unreality. And it's the function of, of uh, say, Wall Street economists is to keep this unreality going. They, you know, they work for brokerage houses like Merrill Lynch, and Merrill Lynch doesn't want them saying, hey, the economy is going to hell. And Merrill Lynch wants them to say, hey, look, uh, this is this positive, this is positive, this is positive, it's to keep people sure. in the markets. So the whole thing works to create a false picture. Sure. Well, we know this, though. When it finally does go belly up, which it's got to, I mean, it, it will be more spectacular than ever. I want to take a few phone calls for Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. You can find his books and more at his website, paulcraigroberts.org. We have links to it on Infowars.com at the bottom of every article he writes. Kevin in Florida, thanks for holding. You're on the air from Florida. Thank you, Alex. Um my, my question, actually, maybe you could pay you back on two to get your opinion on this, but I just feel like once the uh, economy goes belly up, because we all know it is with the TPP and everything, these false bonds, the Ponzi schemes, um, I just feel like the new age depression is going to be like a combination of like Terminator Robocop, where there's going to be a lot of GMO fed poor people, and then they're going to have this big globalist that are going to use the drones and robots to protect them because they've already got them and they got, you know, driverless cars. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, Dr. Roberts, I mean, to quantify that, we know they're going to autonomous drones, autonomous robots. That really removes the soldiers saying no and rebelling. And with this whole autonomous society, uh, th that's why the elite call themselves technocrats. What do you think of Davos folks calling themselves technocrats and installing technocrats as leaders of European nations? Well, I kind of think there's not enough of them. And, then, and if you get a really bad depression, like worse than the Great Depression, um, the inability to cope with the population, I just don't know that violence uh, on the part of the elite will work. Uh, think of all the violence we applied to Iraq and Afghanistan. And did we prevail? No. <laughs> Well, the United States is a much larger place. And so I'm not sure if the elite uh, 
who may be betting on controlling the situation with high-tech violence, uh, whether this will work for them or not. Well, the Pentagon now admits that all this high-tech stuff is not subdued anybody. And the truth is we're just lazy. We're not scared. If they get violent, we're going to get extremely violent, and it's going to be even worse. Uh, and I think that's one message for the elite to get. They're not getting away with this. They need to back off right now. They don't want to end up in Hitler's bunker. Stephen in South Carolina, you're on the air with Dr. Paul Greg Roberts. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Alex. I wanted to ask Dr. Uh, Roberts about uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, column on this, our guest column he had on today. Uh, is, is, it, is it as bad as the Cuban Missile Crisis was? Is this that point that we reached uh, You know the choice? where either we all go extinct or we all use this grid to make it. Well, I didn't see Putin's right article. Right. Putin said that? Are you saying Putin said that? No, he did not say that. He just drew a line in the sand, it seemed, between the BRICS and the West. Well, that's another point. It seems like this policy is driving people to Russia and actually undermining the dollar uh, because people don't like to be bullied. Uh, uh, Dr. Roberts, what do you make? Are, is the situation currently worse than the Cuban Missile Crisis? Uh, no, because uh, Putin doesn't represent an ideology contending for governance of the world. Um, you know, the kind of Cold War between the Americans and the Soviets. This was a different kind of clash. And Putin is more or less uh, ignoring the provocations, uh, at least publicly. They may be boosting their uh, military capabilities and their strategic capabilities. But they're not replying in kind, and they're not making aggressive moves. They have not invaded anybody. <laughs> you know, that's what I always say when people say, who are you for, the U.S. or Russia? Like you said, this is a group of criminals that take control of our government. It's not America versus Russia. And, yeah. and, and Russia hasn't invaded six or seven countries in the last 15 years. They've done nothing. It's America doing it. Yeah, so I, I think that... That uh, there's not, I don't think the situation is dangerous uh, in the sense that it will come from Russia. Uh, they've shown they'll take a lot of provocations without responding uh, in any decisive way. Uh, but Putin keeps uh, telling the United States that it's a waste of time to deliver ultimatums to Russia. We don't pay any attention to them. And uh, we need to work out any disagreements. And uh, I believe in diplomacy, and uh, I'm willing to talk to you at any time and work things out with you. Now, it's the, it's the American side that says, oh, no, we can't, you can't even be a member of our groups. We don't want to talk to you. Uh, you're Hitler. You're more dangerous than Ebola, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of the world sees this and understands who, where the problem is coming from. It's coming from Washington. And so, you know, the world is a much bigger place than the United States and Europe. Although the United States and Europe have dominated the world, you know, in the 19th and 20th century. But it looks like that domination is, is coming to an end. Well, that's what always brings down empires is the hubris. And, and we're seeing that right now. One last caller real quick, and I'll talk to others after he leaves us. Sherry in Texas, quick question. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Alex. My question to you, um, Dr. Roberts, is regarding the likelihood of war. And um, instead of saying it's us against uh, an Obama regime or us against our administration, which seems to pit us against ourselves as a sovereign government, is it not instead um, like a war machine or a military industrial complex that seeks to undermine Obama as president of peace? Uh, and the same war machine, does it not seem to uh, pose anyone who strives? Sure, sure, man. Let me get his quick 30 second take. He's got to go. The Republican and Democratic leadership work as one. Look at TPP. So I don't think Obama's innocent in this. Dr. Roberts, final comment. Well, I think she is right that the president is not as powerful as many of the private interest groups. And the, there is a deep state that tend, you know, I think that John F. Kennedy was assassinated by his own government. Sure. But clear. And so there are these other elements. But still, Obama, I think, was chosen by... So he is not. All right, Dr. Roberts, we lost some of your Skype right there. Thank you so much. A powerful interview. We'll be right back. Uh, thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. PaulCraigRoberts.org.